teacher today and my reader today is Brother Brian and uh, we always teach by a subject and title and the title that we're going to deal with today is take heed that no man deceive you about the Lord's Sabbath day. This is a, a part one of a three part series I'm going to do on this take heed that no man deceive you because so many people think that the Lord's Sabbath day is not important and I'm going to tell you this is very important to the Lord, although the world seemed to kick it to the curb. But we're going to deal with this Sabbath day to show you that everybody in the Bible kept the Lord's Sabbath day. And it's so strange that a book that you learn from that don't nobody keep the Lord's Sabbath day no more. Somebody changed this thing, but when I go out through this book, I see the Lord didn't change it because the Lord made it clear that I'm God and I change not. And I, I guess people don't realize you cannot change what God set up. If God don't change it, then that's the way it should go. So we're going to deal with it. We're going to take a look at this, this Sabbath day and get some understanding about the Lord's Sabbath day and why Jesus is telling you to take heed that no man deceive you. We're going to start this in Matthew 24. Matthew 24 and verse 1. Okay, go ahead and read, brother. And Jesus went out and departed from the temple, and his disciples came to him for to show him the buildings of the temple. Go ahead. And Jesus said unto them, See ye not all these things? Verily I say unto you, There shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming and the end of the world? See, I pay attention to what the disciples did. When Jesus said something, they went on ahead and asked some questions. That's what happens too often when we come to church. We hear stuff that we don't understand, and we just leave and don't ask questions. But when Jesus said this thing, the disciples asked him, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming and the end of the world? And look, look what the first something that Jesus said to them. Go ahead. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. He said, Take heed that no man deceive you, whether it be your uh, preacher, uh, uh, anybody. He said, Take heed that no man deceive you. Why is he telling you this? Go ahead. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. Now, we, he's saying this is going to happen in the last days, brothers and sisters. If you know anything about the Word of God and serve the Word of God, you know we in the last days now. And he's letting you know in the last days there's going to be many people's coming in his name and deceive many. Skip down to verse 11 and go ahead. And many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. Now what's going to rise in the end? Many false prophets going to rise and deceive many. I think some people don't know what a false prophet is. So we're going to go and look at a, a false prophet in the Bible and show you what, the, what a false prophet do. Let's go to Acts the 13th chapter. And we're going to pick it up at verse 6. Acts 13 and verse 6. Because you, he, he's warning you about at the end of, end of this thing, there's going to be a lot of false prophets. And, and people go to church every week and never think that. Could my pastor be a false prophet? I'm gonna, if he's doing this, I'm going to give you the answer to him. Maybe you, maybe you can pick him out. Acts 6, uh, 13 and verse 6. Go ahead. And when they had gone through the isle unto Paphos, they found a certain sorcerer, a false prophet, a Jew whose name was Bar-Jesus. Now they found this false prophet, a Jew whose name was Bar-Jesus. Go ahead. 
which was with the deputy of the country, Sergius Paulus, a prudent man who called for Barnabas and Saul and desired to hear the word of God. Oui. But Elymas, the sorcerer, for so is his name by interpretation, withstood them, seeking to turn away the deputy from the faith. Then Saul, who also is called Paul, filled with the Holy Ghost, set his eyes on him and said, O fool of all subtlety and all mischief, thou child of the devil, thou enemy of all righteousness, wilt thou not cease to pervert the right ways of the Lord? Now you see what this guy going to do? You see what a false prophet do? He pervert the right way of the Lord. That's what a false prophet do. He pervert. The right way of the Lord. I looked up that word pervert. I'm going to Google it right uh, and, and look at it. The word pervert means to cause to turn aside away from what is good or true or right. To cause to turn aside away from a general done or accept, acceptment. And another definition is to twist the meaning of the sense of an interpretation misinterpretation. So that's what a false prophet do. He pervert the word of God. So, and Jesus warning you in these last days that some, there's going to be a lot of false prophets coming along that's perverting the word of God. They're going to sound like they're dealing with the word of God, but they're perverting it. They're changing it. Let's go. Now let's look at this Sabbath day. Let's go into Genesis. Let's, now let's go to Matthew 7. I'm sorry. Let's go to Matthew 7 and because and I, I, I I think people think if they get deceived that when they stand before God, God is going to say, oh, my brother, you, <laughs> you was deceived. Uh, come on into the kingdom. Now, let me show you what he, let me show you what the words say he's going to say. Matthew 7 and 15. Matthew 7, and we're going to pick it up at verse 15. Because if you get deceived, that's why he said, take heed that no man deceive. Because you get deceived. When you stand before God, he ain't going to go, oh, brother, you was deceived by that preacher. That's why he's warning you now. Matthew 7, and we're going to pick it up at 15. Matthew 7 and verse 15. Go ahead. Beware of false prophets. Now he's, once again, he's back to these false prophets again. Go ahead. Which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. Ye shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? Now he's saying you're going to know them by their fruit. What another? You're going to know them by their word. If they word is not in the, this Bible, then you know they, that's not the right fruit. The fruit of their lips, you know them if they saying some. If, if somebody tell you, say, oh, your mother's in heaven right now, when they, at the, like they say at funeral. But I can't read that in the Bible. I read in the Bible and say, I'm going to raise them up at the last day. So he's perverting the word of God. Skip down to verse 20 and go ahead. Wherefore, by their fruits, ye shall know them. He said, by their fruits, you shall know them. You will know them by what they putting on the table. But you got to be, a, that's why you have to spend some time in this Bible to know if he putting something on the table. That's why here at the Israel of God, that's why we read everything. We don't deal with our opinion. We read everything. Go ahead. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Go ahead. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works? Now who are these people going to be saying this? Are these church people? Or is this somebody standing on the street corner going to be saying this? No, these are church people. In the end, he let you know you and me say, Lord, we did all this great work in your name. We cast out devils in your name. But look what he going to say. Go ahead. And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Why the Lord don't know these, know these people? Because they was deceived and they walked with, with, with Christ. They didn't know in, in, in 2 Corinthians, the, the 11th chapter, the 4th verse, that, that it mentioned about another Jesus. They didn't know they were serving that Jesus. That's why he said, take heed that no man deceive you. Because when you get to the end, He's going to let you know, I never, what, uh, he, he said, I never knew you. Why? Go ahead. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. You know, Jesus said, my beloved, you was deceived. Come on in. Now, he'll tell you, depart from me. And when you depart from God at the end, your departure is the lake of fire. 
So you need to take heed that no man deceive you. Genesis 1. Let's, now let's deal with this Sabbath day. See how this thing was set up. Genesis 1, and we're going to pick it up at verse 1. And we're just going to walk through God's calendar when he's creating the, this thing. Now you have to remember in this first chapter, God is not doing no creation here. He is merely looking at what he's going to do. He's sitting down looking at his blueprint. He's going to set this thing up. And that's why people get all confused, think it's too creation. No, this first chapter, God is merely looking at the blueprint. And we're just going to go through it and set these days in order. Uh, uh, Genesis 1 and verse 1. Go ahead. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. See, in the beginning, when is, was it when was in the beginning? Whenever God did it, we don't know when. That would kill me when people try to figure out how old the earth is. God said in the beginning he created the heaven and earth. We don't know when the beginning was. Skip down to verse 5 and go ahead. And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night, and the evening and the morning were the first day. Now that was the first day. I, you notice uh, uh, after, the, after the first day, do you see anywhere where God rests? He didn't rest on the first day, did he? No. Let's skip down to the uh, verse 7 and go ahead. And God made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament, and it was so. And God called the firmament heaven, and the evening and the morning were the second day. Now you notice he didn't rest in the second day. Go Skip down to verse 11 and go ahead. And God said, let the earth bring forth grass, the herb yielding seed, and the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind, whose seed is in itself upon the earth, and it was so. Skip down to verse 13 and go ahead. And the evening and the morning were the third day. Evening and the morning were the third day. God is sturdy working. He's not resting. He's creating. But in here, he's just sitting back looking at his blueprint because he's getting ready to, just like anybody getting ready, if you're going to build something, you got to look at first what you're going to build. Okay, skip down to verse uh, 16 and go ahead. And God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. Skip down, uh, go ahead, read verse 17. And God sent them, set them in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth. Skip down to 19 and go ahead. And the evening and the morning were the fourth day. Now we ended the fourth day, God. We, I'm just showing you God was doing something every day, but he's not creating nothing here. He's just merely looking at the blueprint. Uh, verse uh, 21, go ahead. And God created great whales and every living creature that moveth, which the waters brought forth abundantly after their kind and every winged fowl after his kind. And God saw that it was good. Now skip down to verse 23 and go ahead. And the evening and the morning were the fifth day. Now it's the fifth day. You notice God having rest yet, haven't he? He's steady working. Skip down to uh, verse 26 and go ahead. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. Now he, now he created man. Let's see what day this is. Skip down to verse 31 and go ahead. And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. And the evening and the morning were the sixth day. Now the sixth day God created this man on the sixth day. Now, Really, we're we going to go right on into the second ch uh, chapter of Genesis and, and, and take a look at this thing. And because I really, this, I, these first couple of verses really should have been a part of the first chapter. You know. So go right on ahead in, in Genesis 2 and, go, and, and start at verse 1. Go ahead. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished and all the host of them. Now he, he done finished everything. In six days he done finished everything. What did he do after that? Go ahead. And on the seventh day, God ended his work which he had made, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had made. Now, what day did the Lord rest on? He rest on the seventh day. He rest on the seventh day from all the work that he had made. Go ahead. And God blessed the seventh day and what sanctified What day did he bless? The seventh he blessed day. the seventh day, not the first day. Go ahead. Because that in it he had rested from all his work which God created and made. Go ahead. These are the generations of the heavens and of the earth when they were created in the day that the Lord God made the earth and the heavens. And every plant of the field before was in the earth and every herb of the field before it grew. 
For the Lord God had not caused it to rain upon the earth, and there was not a man to till the ground. Why wouldn't he want a man to till the ground if he created a man in the sixth day? Because in that first chapter, he was just looking at what he was going to do. He was setting it up, saying, okay, on the first day, I'm going to do this. On the second day, I'm going to do this. And on the sixth day, I'm going to create man. But he's right here in the second chapter, he said, want a man to till the, till the ground. Because he hadn't started his prog he hadn't started billing yet. So what day did God sanctify? Let's go and find out what day, what did he call this seventh day? He, he said the seventh day he rests. We're gonna go into Exodus 16 and read one verse, see what did he call this seventh day. Exodus 16, and we're gonna read verse 26. Let's see what he called this seventh day. Cause I don't recall him saying Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. He just said first day, second day, third day. Man, the one put, put the days on them. Exodus 16, and we're going to read verse 26. Okay, go ahead. Six days shall ye gather it, but on the seventh day, which is the Sabbath, in it there shall be none. Now, what day, does, what day is, what that uh, seventh day is called? It is called the Sabbath. That's the only day that God gave a name. The seventh day is the Lord's Sabbath day. That's the only day that the Lord gave a name, and that is on the seventh day. I'm going to show you how important this Sabbath day is. Look what he said. Go to Exodus 31. God called the seventh day the Sabbath. I don't recall him calling the first day the Sabbath. I don't recall him resting on the first day. So it so looks like somebody has perverted this thing, don't it? 31 and verse 15. Exodus 31 and verse 15. Okay, go ahead. Six days may work be done. How many days? Six days of work shall be done. Go ahead. But in the seventh is the Sabbath of rest. The, how many times that said in the Bible before the world realized God mean the seventh day? Go ahead. Holy to the Lord. Whosoever doeth any work in the Sabbath day, he shall surely be put to death. See, people say, well, I work on the Sabbath day, but he give you, Jesus in the New Testament to let you know it's going to come a time when you, you have to work on the Sabbath day or you have to do certain things on the Sabbath day. He called it your ox in the well. But if you just don't, res don't have no respect for the Sabbath day, he said, whoever pollute this Sabbath day, he said, they're going to be put to death. You don't say, well, I didn't keep the Sabbath day last week. I'm still living. But he's talking about the second death, the lake of fire, brothers and sisters, the death that you, you, you're trying to avoid. You're going to die the first death with an Adam brought on you. But the thing you're trying to avoid is this second death. And that's when all this thing going to come to a head. Go ahead. Wherefore, the children of Israel shall keep the Sabbath to observe the Sabbath throughout their generations for a perpetual covenant. Why? It is a sign between me and the children of Israel forever. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, and on the seventh day he rested and was refreshed. Now, how many times do you have to say this? The Lord made this thing, and then some people read this, uh, it's a sign between the children of Israel. Then right away, because you don't have no understanding, so, well, I'm not the children of Israel. Well, let me show you who the children of Israel is. Let's go to Galatians in 3. Galatians 3. Because if you ain't got no understanding, you don't know that everything in this Bible was written to Israel. God didn't talk to nobody but Israel. Galatians 3, and we're going to read, verse, start at verse 26. Galatians 3 and 26. Okay, go ahead. For ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. Now you all are the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. Go ahead. For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. Go ahead. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female, for ye are all one in Christ you, Jesus. You're all one in Christ Jesus. Go ahead. And if you be Christ. Now, if you be Christ. Then are ye Abraham's seed. Then are you Abraham's seed. Who is Abraham's seed? Isaiah 41 and, and verse 8 will tell you that Abraham's seed is Israel. Finish that verse. And heirs according to the promise. So everybody <laughs> is the children of Israel. Because if you be Christ, then you are Abraham's seed. So 
If you Abraham's seed, and, and you know who Abraham's seed is, that's Israel. Then you, that covenant that we read, you still part of that. You are part of the children of Israel. That's why Paul wrote in uh, 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 Romans, the ninth chapter, said, all Israel is not Israel because even the physical Israel got to come back through Christ. We all got to come through Christ to become the children of Israel because the world don't know that Israel is God's name. You come and hang out with us over here at the Israel of God, you'll know that because we'll read it to you. But let's go back to uh, Exodus 20 now and show you the importance of this Sabbath day. Exodus 20 and we're going to pick it up at verse 3. These, this is the tenth comm these are the tenth commandments that the world said we don't have to keep no more. Sound like somebody perverted the word of God. God didn't say it. Jesus, when he showed up on the scene, he said, if you love me, what you got to do? Keep my commandment. So something like somebody perverting the word of God. You better, if your preacher's telling you, you don't have to keep God's commandment, he is a false prophet according to the word of God. Because he's perverting the word. Uh, Exodus 20 and verse 8. Exodus 20 and verse 8. But when you get time, read this 20th chapter. It's dealing with God's commandment that he haven't changed. Go ahead. Verse 8. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. Go ahead. In it thou shalt not do any work. Thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy maid, manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Now he blessed the Sabbath day, and you don't want to take part of this blessing. You're always walking around touch you highly favored and blessed. But the day that he blessed, you don't even want to deal with. He blessed the seventh day, not the first day, so if somebody telling you, oh, uh, we know the, the seventh day is the Lord's seventh day, but we do the traditional day. Ain't no traditional day in this Bible. They perverting the word of God. You done discovered you a false prophet right in front of you if they saying that. According to the word, not according to me. Because this Sabbath day is so important that God put it in his Ten Commandments. But you're going to throw it out and say, oh, we don't have to keep that old law no more. Okay. Let's go, let's go to Leviticus 23, and let me show you what you have to do on this Lord's Sabbath day. Leviticus 23, let me show you what, what he told you to do on this Sabbath day. 23 and 1. Okay, go ahead. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them concerning the feast of the Lord, which ye shall proclaim to be holy convocations, even these are my feast. Now, this is the Lord's feast. When he set it up in the second chapter, it was not a man to till the ground, and he had already set the Sabbath in order. Go ahead. Six days shall work be done, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of rest. Go ahead. And holy convocation. Ye shall do no work therein. It is the Sabbath of the Lord in all your dwelling. Now, what is a holy convocation? That is a holy gathering. That's, what, that's the day you're supposed to have a holy gathering to the Lord on the seventh day. Now, if you're doing it on the first, then somebody perverted the word of God. I'm, I'm, not only in this lesson you're going to learn about the Sabbath day, but you're going to learn about who, who a false prophet is according to the word of God. Because if they're perverting it, if they're teaching something that's not according to the Bible, then they have perverted the word of God. He, uh, uh, he said, this is, uh, you're supposed to have a holy gathering on the Lord's Sabbath day. Go ahead and read that verse 4. These are the feasts of the Lord. These are the feasts of the Lord, not of the Jews, not of the Christian. This is the Lord's feast. He the one set this up. And who's supposed to keep it? Everybody that's following Christ. Every Christian that's following Christ should keep this thing. But I just want you to know it's, it, it is the Lord's Sabbath day. Finish that. Even holy convocations, which ye shall proclaim in their seasons. Now, now let's go and see that Jesus, when he showed up on the scene, 
because Jesus from Abraham to Christ is 28 generations. Let's see what, when Jesus showed up on the scene, did he keep this old boring Sabbath day? Let's go to Luke 4. Since this is the guy we're supposed to be following, let's see what he did. Luke 4, and we're going to pick it up at verse 14. Luke 4 and 14. Okay, go ahead. And Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit into Galilee, and there went out a fame of him through all the region round about. Go ahead. And he taught in their synagogues, being glorified of all. And he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, and as his custom was. That is Jesus' custom. Now go ahead. He went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read. Now, they got the little sign. What would Jesus do? You see what he just did. Why you won't do it? He went into the Sabbath. He went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day. But you going on Sunday, say you followed him. Look like you look like somebody perverted this thing, brother and sister. We reading straight from the Bible. This is this is the same Bible that you can read yourself. He said he stood up and he when he got there on the Lord's Sabbath day, what did he do? He stood up to read. And that's what we're doing now. Go ahead and read that next verse. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written. Now, Jesus couldn't, didn't need to, need to read out of no book. He could have quoted that verbatim because he the one that gave it to Isaiah. But he's trying to give you a message. I'm going to read. So when you go and stand up before the people, what you should do? Why don't you read? Let's go. Let me see that Paul, uh, did, do the, did he do the same thing that Jesus did? Go Acts the 17 chapter. Since, since Paul is your teacher, since you think you're a Gentile, but if you come around here, you're going to find out a Gentile come out of JFAT. Have nothing to do with a non-believer. Acts the 10th chapter, clear that up. But they done perverted that. Acts the seven, 17 chapter, and we'll pick it up at verse 1. 17 and 1. Okay, go ahead. Now, when they had passed through Amphipolis and Apollonia, they came to Thessalonica, where was a synagogue of the Jews. They went into the synagogue of the church. Go ahead. And Paul, as his manner was. As went, Paul's manner was, what did he do? Went in unto them, and three Sabbath days reasoned with them out of the scriptures. Now, he went in there. He What's the scripture? He picked the Bible up just like Jesus did. Why we can't follow that example? He went in there. He did the same thing that Jesus did. He went in on the Sabbath day. He didn't go in on Sunday. Let's go to Acts 18. Pick it up at verse 1. Acts 18 and pick it up at verse 1. Go ahead. After these things, Paul departed from Athens and came to Corinth and found a certain Jew named Aquila, born of Pontus, lately come from Italy with his wife Priscilla, because that Claudius had commanded all Jews to depart from Rome, and came unto them. Go ahead. And because he was of the same craft, he abode with them and brought, for by their occupation they were tent makers. Go ahead. And he reasoned in the synagogue every Sabbath. And, and Sunday. No. Sabbath. Just every Sabbath. He missed Sunday, huh? I wonder who are these people that reason every Sunday. Look like they done perverted the word of God. Go ahead. And persuaded the Jews and the Greeks. He persuaded the Jews and the Greeks. You know who the Jews are? That's Israel. Who the Greeks are? Those are the Gentiles. Let's go into Acts 13 chapter. Back up to Acts 13 chapter. When Paul was, was, started, was, was sent his mission of, of what he's supposed to do, he was the apostle to the Gentiles. In other words, he was the apostle to the Europeans. Because that's who the Gentiles are. And we can read that to you. Acts the 13th chapter, and we're going to pick it up at verse 13. Acts 13 and 13. This is Paul uh, 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 before he was, he stopped dealing with these Israelites, or these Jews, and they didn't want to accept him. Then he turned to the Gentiles. Acts 13 and 13. Go ahead. Now, when Paul and his company loosed from Paphos, they came to Perga in Pamphylia, and John departed from them, returning to Jerusalem. Go ahead. But when they departed from Perga, they came to Antioch in Pisidia and went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and sat down. Now, they keep doing that. They seem to be doing the same thing. 
Every time they go to church, they're going in on the Sabbath day. And they went in there and they sat down. Now, now uh, 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 what verse was that? 14. Okay, skip down. We ain't going to deal with what he, what he did now. Skip down to verse 42. Let's show you when he came out of the, the synagogue. Verse 42, go ahead. And when the Jews were gone out of the synagogue, the Gentiles besought that these words might be preached to them the next Sabbath. Now, the Gentiles wanted to be taught on the next Sabbath. They didn't say next Sunday. He said the next Sabbath. I wonder how Sunday even got in there. Because somebody perverted and put it in there, brother. Skip down to verse 44 and go ahead. And the next Sabbath day came almost the whole city to, together to hear the word of God. Go ahead. But when the Jews saw the multitudes, they were filled with envy and spake against those things which were spoken by Paul, contradicting and blaspheming. Go ahead. Then Paul and Barnabas waxed bold and said, It was necessary that the word of God should first have been spoken to you. But seeing ye put it from you and judge yourselves unworthy of everlasting life, lo, we turn to the Gentiles. Now, uh, you know, but what day was they going to have service on? The Sabbath day. But I think this is where the world get all confused when right here when Paul said, Lo, we turn to the Gentiles. They think the whole word become Gentiles now. But what was Peter and them doing? Peter and them was still teaching the word. Paul was just one somebody teaching the Gentiles. But he was teaching the same thing that Jesus was teaching. See, but we when we read, Whoa, he turned to the Gentiles. Oh, that's when he got rid of Israel. No, that's just one apostle. You had 12 other apostles still out there teaching. But God was just bringing the Gentiles into the word. But that's how, I know that's how people get confused, thought the word went over to the Gentiles. Israel still was in charge of this word, just like we're in charge of it now. Now let's go and look at God's covenant. Let's go to Isaiah 56. See who he mentioned this Sabbath day again. Isaiah 56. Because this word is still in the hand of Israel. Isaiah 56, and we're going to pick it up at verse 1. Isaiah 56 and verse 1. Okay, go ahead. Thus saith the Lord, keep ye judgment and do justice, for my salvation is near to come and my righteousness to be revealed. When is, when is the Lord's righteousness going to be revealed? When he show up. Go ahead. Blessed is the man that doeth this, and the son of man that layeth hold on it. And that, do what? That keepeth the Sabbath from polluting it and keepeth his hand from doing any evil. Now you got to keep this Sabbath. This part of this covenant. Skip down to verse 6 and go ahead. Also the sons of the stranger that joined. Now who, who is the son of the stranger? Anybody that's not Israel. Go ahead. That joined themselves to the Lord to serve him and to love the name of the Lord, to be his servants, everyone that keepeth the Sabbath from polluting it, and taketh hold of my covenant. Now, how plain is that? If you want to be a servant of the Lord, you got to keep this Sabbath from polluting it. You got to take hold of the Lord's covenant and keep his Sabbath day. Let's 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 go and look at this Sabbath day. I want to I want to clear some up. We 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 gonna walk this Sabbath day and set it on the table and try to give you some understanding. But first, let's see how many uh, a day with the Lord here. Let's go to Second Peter. 3 and 8, 2 Peter 3 and 8. So then we're going to go deal with this Sabbath day and, and try to give you some understanding about it. 2 Peter 3 and verse 8. We're going to read one verse. Go ahead. But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years is one day. Now all them days we read about in the in Genesis, the first chapter, when I read the first day of the Sabbath, all those days was a thousand years. Now let's go to this Genesis. We go. We gonna look at this um, this Sabbath day thing. We gonna walk it through. Let's go to Genesis two, and we are gonna pick it up at verse one. Genesis two, and verse one. I want you to pay attention to what the Bible say. Genesis two and verse one. Okay, go ahead. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished. And now, do all... you know what finished mean? <laughs> I mean, it's finished. I mean, ain't no work need to be done. He's, see, but you remember now in the first chapter, he's looking at the blueprint. He's looking at the blueprint for seven days. He's, okay, it's going to take me seven days to finish this thing. 
seven days, I'm going to have this thing wrapped up. If you're building a building, anytime you're building something, uh, as a contractor, they want to know how long it's going to take you to build it. Oh, it's going to take me six, seven months. So you're looking at your blueprint, but you ain't built nothing yet. But you tell them how long it's going to take. He said, so in seven days, this thing going to be finished. Go ahead. And all the hosts of them. And on the seventh day, God ended his work, which he had made, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work, which he had made. Now, he, had, he rest on the seventh day. He said, hey, I'm going to have this thing complete in seven days. Skip down to verse 6 and go ahead. Now, we're going to deal with, we skipping, we ain't going to read about what he did on the first day. We're going to read about what he did on the sixth day. What did he, and, and what did he do on the sixth day in the first chapter? We're going to read it. Go ahead. But they went up amidst from the earth and watered the whole face of the ground. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground. Now, what day did he form man in? In the sixth day. According to the blueprint from chapter 1, he formed man the sixth day. Go ahead. And breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. Go ahead. And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there he put the man whom he had formed. Now, he put the man in the garden that he was he had formed, but he had already, now we're in the time he's doing this thing now. Now, so that means whatever he did on the first day is already in the God. What he did on the second day is already in the God. All the animals is in the garden because he treated them before he created Adam. We in the sixth day now. We in the sixth day. Stay with me. Uh, uh, skip down to verse 16. Look what he said them on this sixth day. Go and, ahead. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it, for in the day that thou eatest thereof thou shalt surely die. Now he told Adam, the day you eat of this tree, you shall surely die. And, uh, and, and, and uh, let's see what Adam did. Now remember what day we in. We still in the sixth day. He, he created, this thing is being created now. He's building this, what he what he was looking at in the first chapter. We're in the sixth day. He told him in the sixth day, if you eat from this tree, you're going to surely die. Let's go into the third chapter and see what happened. Okay, go ahead and read verse 1. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. Now he told us, this woman knew what God had commanded them to do. Go ahead and read that verse 4. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. Didn't he just pervert the word of God? He just pervert the word of God. So you now you know where the, the false prophet come from, who is their leader. Is some is the chief converter of the word of God, and that's this is serpent, the old devil, and Satan the devil. Read that verse six and go ahead. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat, and gave also unto her, her husband with her, and he did eat. Now, what is these fruit that we read earlier? You can tell a false prophet by his fruit. What fruit did they just eat? They had the fruit of lies. They, they listened. God told them the day you eat of this tree, you're going to die. Then the deceiver told them, you ain't going to surely die. So the fruit that they had was the fruit of lies. That's why he said you would know them by their fruit. He said you're going to surely die. Now we ain't going to deal with all of what happened. But let's skip down to what happened once they, to God called and sent us on Adam. Go ahead, verse 17. Verse 17, go ahead. And unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it, cursed is the ground for thy sake. In sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. Verse 19, go ahead. In the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread, till thou return unto the ground, for out of it wast thou taken, for dust thou art, and unto dust shalt thou return. Verse 22, go ahead. And the Lord God said, Behold, the man has become as one of us, to know good and evil. And now lest he put forth his hand and take also of the tree of life and eat and live forever. Now you see what I see here? Even in Adam's state of sin, 
he could eat from the tree of life and live forever. But God didn't want this man to live forever in a wicked state. He said, now you become like one of us, no good and evil. And he said, if I, he said, this man, he said, look what he said. He said, also, if he, if he stay around me and keep eating my word, that's all he's saying. He said, this man can learn how to live forever. So what happened? Skip down to verse 20, 20, 22, and, I mean, 30, 24, and go ahead. So he drove out the man, and he placed at the east of the Garden of Eden cherubim and a flaming sword which turned every way to keep the way of the tree of life. What day is all this happening on? This is the sixth day. This man messed up in the sixth day. Let's show you what happened when Adam, because Adam, once Adam at uh, ate the word, the fruit of, uh, 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 of the, uh, the serpent, let's show you what happened. Let's go to Psalm 82. Psalm 82. And we're going to look at this thing. Psalm 82. And we're going to pick it up at verse 2. Psalm 82. And we're going to pick it up at verse 2. Okay, go ahead. How long will you judge unjustly and accept the persons of the wicked? He said, how long are you going to judge unjustly and accept wickedness, the person of the wicked? Skip down to verse 5 and go ahead. They know not. Neither will they understand. They walk on in darkness. All the foundations of the earth are out of court. Why is the foundation of the earth out of court? Because God didn't create this man to die. He didn't create this man to die. He created this man to live forever. But this man figured out a way to die by being disobedient. Go ahead and read. I have said, you are gods, and all of you are the children of the Most High. He said, I created you to be God. And you supposed to, you are the children of the Most High, but since you did what you did, what's going to happen to Adam? Go ahead. But you shall die like men and fall like one of the princes. See, that's what Adam did. He brought death into the thing. And God didn't, what the perfect, how can God, now remember now, are we still in the sixth day? All of this didn't happen. How can the Lord rest? He looking at his blueprint and said, wait a minute. Something ain't right about this blueprint. And my blueprint, I was supposed to go right from the sixth day into the seventh day. Let me show you what happened. Uh, uh, let's go to Romans 5 and 12. Romans 5 and 12. Show you what Adam did. Romans 5 and verse 12. Romans 5 and verse 12. Okay, go ahead. Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. Now, how can God rest on the seventh day but in the sixth day, this man then brought death on the, on the table. He would, in other words, we'll go into the day of rest, and then God's whole creation would die. Because God didn't create this man to die. But you know what sin do? Sin separates you from God. Because what, what did he do? He drove man away from the tree of life. And you remember what he said? Now once he drove this man out, let's go to Leviticus 23. Let's go to Leviticus 23. He drove this man out. Let's see how many days this man got to work. He drove him out. Now all of a sudden some God, God, now you got to go back to his blueprint. Say, I can't go into the seventh day now. Because in the sixth day, this man done messed up. Leviticus 23, and we'll read one verse, verse 3. Leviticus 23 and verse 3. What did he tell his man now? 23, go ahead. Six days shall work be done. Okay, he drove the man out. How many days this man got to work? Six days. Now he got to add six more days to this blueprint. He got to add six more days to this blueprint. He couldn't go right into the seventh day. But what's going to happen after the six days? Go ahead. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of rest. Now you see the Sabbath now is behind these six days. <laughs> not, the, not the sixth day. See, don't get them confused. The sixth day that God created everything. But then he turned around and gave this man six days, which is 6,000 years to work. 
And then what's going to happen after they work them 6,000 years? Then the Sabbath's going to come. God had to add six days to his blueprint. So I had to go back. I got, I got to go add something to this blueprint. And guess who he sent to do this? But we read in the Genesis second chapter that the work was what? Finished from the foundation of the world. Let's go and let's go and see. Six days. He, he, this man got to work now. Let's go to John 4 and verse 34. And here come this guy. Maybe you understand what Jesus was talking about when he showed up. Because now he got to go back to that, you know, like the same thing when you're building a building. You get ready to close it out, and you say, oh, man, this is not right. You got to make an adjustment on this thing. You just can't say, okay, I'm going to go ahead and put the doors on this thing, shut it up. No, something ain't right. This is what Jesus said, John 4 and 34. We're going to read it twice. John 4 and 34. John 4 and verse 34. Go ahead. Jesus saith unto them, My meat is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work. And to finish his work because this thing was not finished. He couldn't go into the, you remember, Adam messed up in the sixth day. So the Sabbath day is still he can't go into the sub. Go to uh, uh, John 5. John 5, let's read verse 36. John 5 and verse 36. Look what he said. Go ahead. But I have a greater witness than that of John. For the works which the Father hath given me to finish. He said, for the work which the Father hath given me to finish. What is this work that Jesus got to do to come and finish? He got to get this man back to God. This man has, this Adam then separated God and man so the whole creation, not only will we die the first death, which is the physical death, but we also die the spiritual death, which is the lake of fire. So he, he said, this work that the Lord gave me to finish, go ahead. The same works that I do bear witness of me, now, that the Father has sent me. Now, but we read in Genesis the second chapter, the work was finished. Yeah, it was finished when he was looking at the blueprint. So, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to create this man in the sixth day. This man going to go a thousand years, and then we're going to go into rest. But when this man messed up, he gave this man six days to work. You got to add this to the blueprint for this thing is complete. So he said, we got to, we got to go and add something. So that let me know if he added those six days to the blueprint, the Sabbath day haven't came yet. It haven't came yet. So how can somebody change something that haven't came yet? Let me show you. Let me show you what a, 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 a Jesus had to do. Let's go to let's go to Second Peter before I before we get into this. Um, uh, 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 show you that the Sabbath day haven't came. Let's go to First Peter three and eighteen. First Peter three and eighteen. Because Jesus had to come and finish this thing. First Peter, because the work wasn't finished. If the work would have been finished, guess who would have won this thing? The devil would have won out. He would have destroyed God's creation. That's how important the Sabbath day is. Uh, 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 first Peter 3 and 18, we're going to reach that one verse. I'm going to show you what Jesus had to do. First Peter 3 and 18, go ahead. For Christ also hath once suffered for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit. Now what he had to do, he had to come and die. He's a Christ that once suffered for sin, the just for the unjust. The, uh, Jesus was the just, and the whole world was the unjust. He said that he might bring us what? To God. Bring us back to God. Because Adam took us away from God. What day did he do that on? On the sixth day. Once Adam did that on the sixth day, he, God had to say, oh, I got to go back and look at my blueprint. I got to add six days to this blueprint to get this work finished. That's why Jesus said, I come, and, I come to finish the work that the Father started. That's why when Jesus was on the cross, when he was dying on the cross, after everything was coming, what did Jesus say? It is finished. And these preachers make a whole sermon about that. And the only sermon he's saying, I didn't finish the work 
that you sent me to do. I done set this thing up that man have access back to the Father. That's all. It, it was finished. Now, once again, now if you put yourself on the blood of Jesus, everything will be all right. But I'm going to show you. Now, let's get back and show you that this Sabbath day haven't came. Let's go to Hebrews 3. How are you going to change something in an age of Cain yet? Hebrews 3, and we're going to pick it up at verse 8. Hebrews 3, and we're going to pick it up at verse 8. Okay, go ahead. Harden not your hearts, as in the provocation in the day of temptation in the wilderness. Now, this is the time that he's dealing with here. This is the time when Moses brought the children of Israel up out of Egypt. And he's telling He's telling you, harden not your heart. Go ahead. When your fathers tempted me, proved me, and saw my works 40 years. Now, this is 40 years they was in the wilderness. Go ahead. Wherefore, I was grieved with that generation and said they do always err in their heart, and they have not known my ways. God said, man, I was grieved with these that generation. Man, they make my head hurt. <laughs> and look what he told them. It was because they... They didn't believe God. God did all this stuff. He parted the Red Sea. He brought all the plagues on Egypt. And these guys didn't believe him. Look what he, look what, and God was grieved with them. Look what he, look, look the promise he told them. Go ahead, verse 11. So I swear in my wrath, they shall not enter into my rest. We're going to find out what rest that is. He said, man, these guys was, was, didn't believe me. I'm not going to let them enter into my rest. What verse was that? 11. Uh, go ahead. Take heed, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. Now he's like, now he wanted us to go right on into uh, Hebrews, the fourth chapter. Hebrews, the fourth chapter. Now these guys in the wilderness can enter into that rest. Now Paul is talking about this same rest. This this years later. <laughs> Look what he said, verse 1, Hebrews 4 and 1. Go ahead. Let us therefore fear, lest the promise being left us of entering into his rest, any of you should seem to come short of it. <laughs> what rest is this that was, that was available that, that Jesus promised them guys in the wilderness so you guys ain't going to get in this rest? Now, Paul is telling us, and we reading this, so he's talking to us. He said, hey, man, don't y'all. He said, let us therefore fear, at least the promise of being left of us of entering into this rest. We got to find out what rest he's talking about. Go ahead. For unto us was the gospel preached, as well as unto them. Now, he letting you know the same word that was preached to them back there in, in the wilderness is the same word that's being preached to you now. Because God don't change. He don't pervert his word. He ain't going to teach the children of Israel one some, teach the Gentiles one some, teach the Hamite one some. God teach everybody the same thing. Because we all looking for the same thing. And that is salvation. Go ahead. But the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. Go ahead. For we which have believed do enter into rest, as he said, as I have sworn in my wrath, if they shall enter into my rest, although the works were finished from the foundation of the world. Oh, what work is he talking about that was finished from the foundation of the world? Then we read in Genesis, the second chapter, that he said it was finished. So we, now we know what rest He's talking about, go ahead, make it even clear, go ahead. For he spake in a certain place on the seventh day on this wise. He spoke on the seventh day. Now we back to that seven days rest. Go ahead. And God did rest the seventh day from all his works. And in this place again, if they shall enter into my rest. Seeing therefore it remaineth that some must enter therein, and they to whom it was first preached, Entered not in because of unbelief. See, they didn't enter in because of unbelief. Now, only ain't nobody entered into this rest. What he's saying is, your name, the one that's going to get into this rest, they name are written in the book of life. Because everybody's still in the grave. God's word don't change. He said, I'm going to raise them up at the last day. But they, they name are written in the book of life, the one that's going to be in this rest. Go ahead. What verse we at? Verse 7. Go ahead. Again, he limited a certain day saying in David today after so long a time as it is said today if you will hear his voice harden not your heart now harden your heart when you hear the word of God go ahead 
For if Jesus had given them rest. If Jesus had gave them, gave them rest them 40 years in the wilderness. What do you mean Jesus? Uh, 1 Corinthians, the 10th chapter, told you that rock that followed Moses was Christ. Go ahead. Then would he not afterward have spoken of another day. Which is that seventh day. Go ahead. There remaineth therefore a rest to the people of God. He said, therefore there remain. That means it haven't came yet. A rest for the people of God. Go ahead. Uh, skip down to uh, 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 that was verse 9. Yeah. Skip down to verse 11. What is Paul telling us to do? Let us labor, therefore, to enter into that rest. And we got to labor to enter into this rest because the Sabbath day haven't came yet. How can somebody change the Lord's Sabbath day and it haven't came yet? Let's go and look at this Lord's Sabbath day. Let's go to uh, uh, Revelation 20. And we're going to pick it up at verse 1. Revelation 20 and verse 1. Okay, go ahead. And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years. Now you got to take this guy away for a thousand years if you want to have some peace. Now skip down to verse 20 and let's look at this. Look at this. Uh, 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 the Sabbath day, because most people don't understand the Sabbath day is the day that the Lord going to return. That's why he's telling you, remember this day, that's the day I'm coming back. But you done changed it. But the Sabbath day is the day that the Lord going to come back on. Verse 4, go ahead. And I saw thrones and they that sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. What, what, this thousand, I tell you, the years of God, if one day is as a thousand years, this thousand years is the Lord's Sabbath day. This is the time that the Lord is going to come back. They lived and reigned with Christ for a thousand years, brothers and sisters. The Sabbath day haven't came yet. So how can somebody change the Lord's Sabbath day, brothers and sisters? The Sabbath day is still to come because Adam messed up. God added six days to his blueprint. And then after those six days, man got to work six days. And then on the seventh day, which haven't came yet, that is the Lord's Sabbath day. That's when the Lord would turn. That's why the Sabbath day is so important. If you don't remember to keep it now, why should God remember you when he show up and set this Sabbath day on earth and where we're going to be at rest, which is the seventh day, the Lord's Sabbath day. Brothers and sisters, please take heed that no man deceive you. Because if he do, God ain't going to have no pity on you at the end. Remember the Sabbath day. Keep it holy. I thank you for your time.